You broadcast in Radio show. I am your girl Franchella, and of course, we got the best host on the East Coast, Lynette. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's so thank good to be back you. again, y'all. I'm telling you, thank you so much for all your support. I see so many on the line right now. I truly appreciate everybody who's been rocking with the ladies of the Real Recognized Real Talk Radio Show. So. Yeah. We have, once again, some awesome guests tonight. You don't want to miss it. So share this with, with uh, your people um, and um, get everybody on board because, you know, real recognize real. So before we bring on our first guest, we're going to give you a little bit of we do hood news. Um, so go ahead, Lynette. What you got? Well, um, first I want to talk, I, I got to clear the air first because the last time we were on, uh, we were on with Keyshawn. And we were talking about dating. And so I, he asked me, you know, have I met anybody and so on and so forth. So I said, well, I haven't met anybody, but I didn't get to finish my whole sentence. But I had a few phone calls and text messages from people that I had met saying, oh, so I'm nobody now. And so I'm like, OK, let me clear the air. I didn't get to finish my sentence. It wasn't that I didn't meet people. I did meet people. It just didn't work out. So I didn't know y'all was watching. But uh, I just wanted to clear that in. So now, back to um, the show. So thank y'all for watching, though. So I just didn't meet anybody that worked out. So I did meet people. Okay, that's that. So now, um, I also want to say that Franchella and I had the pleasure of being a part of the Joe Biden campaign and Kamala Harris campaign. So as many of you may have seen the commercial, our commercial, hey, hey, Commercials. Not commercials. just one. We had two we commercials. Had two commercials out there. Yes, yes, it yes. Was yes. It, it was seen on in and um and uh CNN, yeah. Fox, ABC, ABC, NBC, CBS, yeah. TV yeah. One, BET. Yes. Yeah. So, so we, we were, I'm I'm excited that we were a part of that journey. 
So that yeah. was this a very important election, a very important campaign. And yeah. so we also want to say congratulations. Yes, congratulations. President elect Biden and Vice President President elect Kamala Harris. So congratulations. And I, we're so looking forward to 2021. Yes, please. Yes, please. And thank you. <laughs> so our current 45. Act like he don't want to, you know, accept the, you know, he don't want to go out without a fight. He don't want to accept it. So why he want to lose twice in the same fight? I don't know. So he has people right. out there in Atlanta recounting uh, votes. So I'm like, why would you want to lose twice in the same fight? But whatever. Right. And anyway, so on no energy. That's right. On to the next. <laughs> so also rest in peace to a uh, longtime Jeopardy host, um, Alex Trebek. Rest in yeah. peace to uh, one of the actors on a BET series. His name is Bert B B Balasco. Um, so rest in peace to him. Franchella and I also had the pleasure on Sunday to be a part of Eli and his production. They did a 12 premiere um, yeah. film. It was awesome. Franchella was in the Epidemic, which is one of their 12 films. She did an awesome job, Franchella. Yeah. And yeah. I had a Thank you. I had the pleasure of being in the uh, Amaryllis, one of the 12 films. So these yeah. ladies were amazing. You did it, mate. Girl, you killed it. Like, give, it, wait, give, give me a little bit of that voice. Like, do, do a little something. Y'all see. A little bit of that, 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 that <laughs> voice that you, you did on the uh, on Garbera's daughter from the Gladiators Garden Village. Who selfishly stole the land to stones, all to become beautiful. Yes. <laughs> it, was better, it was better in the film, you know. But yeah. it no, it, it was so good because the other two, they they were like, it was like stepsisters or something. Like, you know, we you were like we were yeah. sisters. Yeah, you're right, right. But they was, you know, making funny and uh, of the situation. You, you were so serious, and you looking at them like, you know. So it was, <laughs> it was amazing. It was an amazing night, you know. Over yeah. uh, three point four um, thousand people tuned in, and I mean, the messages were were oh, wonderful. Yes, it was yes. so thought provoking. I laughed. I cried. I mean, the, the casting was amazing. The, the selection process that they did to cast, it was awesome. Like, so if you missed it, you missed a very good one. But I'm sure that this won't be the last. So congratulations to the twins, Eli and Lou, and happy birthday again. Happy belated birthday now. So also um, about the health care. How do you feel about the health care uh, situation where now the Supreme Court is doing, is doing a hearing about health care? Well, and why healthcare is, right healthcare is very important especially now that we are in this pandemic um cases are rising and people are at risk of losing their health benefits and it's sad that we even you know this whole time this whole four years have been money over people and it, it's just it really sad to me and i pray that you know it works out for all those with pre-existing conditions and that have this um you know that have this benefit and look forward to it you know so we yeah. know that god's going to prevail in and 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 everything he showed it by this election you know we we took it for granted and trump got in four years ago but we all stood up and we all we got it together yes and you united for the better and for the people. So, um, yeah, amen, amen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, we, we without, we not like, it's so many important topics that we bring, we try to bring you guys. We have special edition to, um, to, um, our shows uh, off of the regular shows that we need to talk because it takes more than, than five or 10 minutes to talk about some of these issues. So, but today is about our guests. Right. And Correct. um so without uh, further ado, we're going to bring in our first guest, Demarco. How are you doing? Good. How are you? How's it going? Oh, it's going well. How's it going out there with you guys? I'm listening to you and I'm like, okay, you guys <laughs> talking about some things out there. I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging it. 
Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being a guest on our show. But what we want to do is we want to properly introduce you. So, Lynette, could you introduce our guest? Absolutely. So, D.P. DeMarco is a producer born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. He developed a love for the arts while attending Near North High School, formerly known as Cooley High. He later enrolled in Columbia College, Chicago to study acting and writing and began producing talent showcases in Chicago. From Chicago, he came to Philadelphia and applied what he learned from the trials he encountered in Chicago. As a result, his Philly showcases were a success. D.P. Marco went on to produce more than 200 show dates and more than 10 productions around the United States. Thank you and welcome to the Real Recognized Real Talk radio show. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so if that was a very modest and humble uh, bio, usually I get like three pages that I have to condense. <laughs> Absolutely, and if you look, if you go into his website, you'll see all the amazing things he's done. And I'm like, oh wow, he very modest, very modest. So, exactly. well, yeah. so welcome and thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Excited. So tell us a little bit about your journey um, to pursuing film and theater. Um, the journey. Um, it's been a long one. I started this whole thing back in 1999. I think that's I think that's when cash money was taking over, right? For the 2009, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> back then, man, but I was on some positive stuff, man. Um, but I started back then uh, doing talent showcases uh, in the Chicago area. Um, after uh, starting those showcases, I was blessed to move to Philadelphia. Uh, like in 2004, I believe, is when I moved to Philly. And when I got to Philly, I brought that same concept and mindset with me uh, on producing showcases. Uh, Philly quickly jumped on uh, to the concept of what I was doing with these talent showcases. And I quickly began to uh, meet people, um, build relationships, et cetera, uh, which led me to um, writing and producing stage productions. And um, from that point, uh, uh, meeting those people, um, God, it took us on an extraordinary journey uh, up and down the East Coast. So having several theater productions and now film, what advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers, producers, and writers um, trying to uh, build a career in theater and film? As you, as you have um, mentioned prior, you said it was quite a journey. So what advice, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to others like you? Um, copyright your stuff. Copyright your stuff. Copyright your stuff. <laughs> facts. Facts. Um, facts upon facts upon facts. I'm sorry. I say facts upon facts upon facts. That's, that's yes. Yeah, because a lot of people, first thing, I meet a lot of new writers. Uh, hey, read my stuff. Hey, read my stuff. Hey, read my stuff. And my question is, is it copyright? A lot of times, no. Um, and you got to realize that you have a gift that the industry is looking for. Um, this is a uh, content creative market. Um, so as much as you think they need you, uh, um, I mean, as much as you think you need them, they need you. Um, new ideas and content creative is our, is our playing field. Um, so I would definitely say make sure your stuff is copywritten and, and believe in what you believe in your product, man. Believe in what you have. You know, it was a time I first wrote the first draft of Philadelphia, the stage play. It was a complete bust. It was a disaster. Um, Never forget that feedback I got from people uh, after writing the second draft of it. But that second draft is what allowed us to do that production uh, more than 200 times across the country. That first draft worked. I thought it was all that. Reality hit me. Um, those, those, that feedback came. And with that feedback, I was able to listen. I'm glad I was open to listen because if I wasn't open to listen, um, that would have really, really, really hurt me. So being humble, don't think you know it all. Okay. Don't think you know it all. And I think those two things right there will really get you off to the right start. Right. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome advice. Awesome advice. And it's so true. Um, a lot of people are, a lot of the directors and producers are not really open to feedback. And sometimes when, as an actor or an actress, you might have little um, things that you might want to add, but 
some people are they see you as as here and they're here, so they're not mm-hmm. open to uh it's not really, but just constructive feedback that might even help the production uh mm-hmm. be well received because I think if people look at it as we're the audience, we're the, also the audience. So mm-hmm. you, you want that feedback because the audience is what's going to sell. Is what how, how are you going to sell your tickets to your to your production? So right. a lot of times, you know, you might hear directors say, "Oh no, you want your own show." As soon as you try to say something, it's like, "Oh well, if you want to do your own thing, then build your own production." You know, don't tell me what to do with mine. But well, often it's not that we're saying that you're doing something wrong. We're saying that maybe there might be a different approach that you might want to consider. Doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong. It's just that everybody, like you said, nobody knows everything. So everybody should be open to learning new things. You know, I I, I applaud you for that. Thank you. So, so just 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 well, off for, for one for one second. Sorry, sorry, I, I I disappear. I'm sitting here, and usually, you know, everything works on motion. I don't know about y'all, but I'm in my happy place right now. Every part of my house is decorated for Christmas. I'm sorry. So I don't know if you heard it, but everything started going off. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I disappeared. So it, it, the, the carousel is going. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm grabbing stuff. I'm throwing it in the bathroom, just trying to camouflage something. <laughs> well, you have animated toys or something over there? <laughs> I do. I do. I'm telling you, with everything for 2020, I, you know, I mean, Christmas is my happy place, and I just, it, it just makes me smile and feel good. And they just talked yeah, about yeah. it on the news, how everybody <laughs> is decorating early and getting to the spirit early because of everything that's going on. So I, I just want to apologize, and I was, there. I was like, what is going on? Everything's going off, but you know, I guess it was for a reason. I should have let y'all listen to it. <laughs> that's okay. I, I didn't hear it, but that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, DeMarco, yes, you, you're absolutely right about, you know, um, I actually um, produced and wrote my first um, stage play called Twisted Seasons and I had it copywritten as well. But then, you know, I heard a horror story um, with, with um, and his name is escaping me right now for some reason, but he played on a Bill Cosby show and play he played in print. Yes, like Clayton, right. And so he, he copy he did copyright his his project and um and it's still he allegedly is still was stolen from him. He, he said that's where um uh Lee Daniels got Empire from. So mm. um, okay. yeah, so so I mean we did this whole show with him and all his documentation, everything you can find on our page. But um, you know, it, it is it, all they got to do is twerk it a little bit, you know, or move things around a little bit. You know, it, I don't know how it can really, you know, save people unless it's word for word and exactly the way. You know, yeah. So another a way, another way to protect yourself with that is do a non-compete clause or non-compete form. A non-compete is saying, listen, you show me about real, real, real recognized, real show. I can't come up with that concept of what you did because it's a, it's a non-compete. I'm not going to compete with you on that. So that's very important, too. When you sit down and meet with people on your projects, do that non-compete. That NDA, of course, uh, those two forms will help you, but also get yourself trademark Nick Cannon. You see what happened right now. Right. So again, copyright, trademark, non-disclosure, non-compete. Okay? Right. Don't, don't, don't tell nobody about your idea. The money team. Floyd mm-hmm. Till 50, Floyd Till 50, that same night 50 got it, we got a trademark. Wow. You know? wow. Yeah, well, the, the whole, the, you know, the, the Hollywood to me personally, just my opinion, it's so, it's so cutthroat. Um, and, and it's sad, you know, because it's so much talent like yourself that's out here and your projects are phenomenal. And, um, you know, it, it should be on a different platform. You know, you try to get to it and to, to the, to everybody wants to go that way and go to, but, but really, you know, 
you, you get more love and support on this level. I personally feel as though I get more love and support and recognition. You know, when when you go to a higher platform, it, it, it's just so much competition. And, and so many are like, you know, Denzel was overlooked until he, he did training day for so long. I mean, he's an amazing actor, you know? He had to be what they said, he had to be crooked before he took it, you know? It, it's just, it's insane. He, yeah. he had to get naked to get an uh, Oscar. So it's, you know, just a, it's just a difficult time sometimes within the entertainment industry. But you have to stick to your own, you know, stick to your own morals and standards and um, just do, do what you can do, you know. And, and if they recognize your talent, they recognize your talent. If they don't, that's okay too. Right. So yeah. you are currently bringing Philadelphia to Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us about the project and what the message is behind um, that project? Yeah. So what we're doing in Philly, um, we've been doing a stage play forever. We was based out of Philly for a long time. And what we're doing now is we already done it already. We did the casting call for Philadelphia the series. What we was able to do was take the stage play. Uh, myself and uh, my writing partner, Kaisan Martin, is actually uh, based in Philly, live in Philly. Uh, we was able to take the actual stage play and scratch it out into an actual series. And with that, um, numerous actors from across uh, the country came to Philadelphia to audition. And what we're hoping to achieve with this production um, is show people um, that there are consequences um, behind your choices. Uh, in doing that as well, we are encouraging people um, to, uh, to to step to step up and speak out against gun violence in our community, um, where many times um, the, the 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 aggressors are people that live in our communities. Man, and we're not speaking out against that. And what ends up happening is multiple victims fall uh, um, to senseless violence sometimes in our neighborhoods. And it's a very positive message um, in, in the story, but we really push the gospel. Uh, of Jesus Christ in this production as well. So it gives you the streets, it gives you the community, but it also gives you the gospel. Amen. So, amen. Amen. It definitely so, needs the gospel. You know? And we need the message because as as you may know, and everyone else watching in Philadelphia for the past several years, we've had uh gun violence uh increasing. You know, nonsensely, like it, it's perfect, it's purposeless, but it continues. So I, I applaud you for taking on that. I'm pretty sure it's a huge feat because of, you know, what we're facing today. So it is relevant in this current um, time as well. So you, you also have a play um, titled The City of Philadelphia Department of Corrections Women's Division. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Ties into <laughs> you did your homework. <laughs> um, so this production, I wanted to show the uh, humanity side of women prisoners that's in the city of Philadelphia. Um, these women are mothers, they're daughters, they're wives, but when they're away in prison, man, uh, sometimes they found uh, some of their family members have turned away. Some of their mm -hmm. friends have stopped visiting them. Uh, even husbands uh, at the point of still come to visit these women. And I show that opposite of men prison, women prisoners, they become family. And I show how they all begin to be, uh, how, I show they all begin to lean on each other and how they support each other and how they become uh, spiritually supportive to each other and amidst, their, and amidst their own personal crisis. So I, I, I don't focus on you no know, rapes or anything like that. No, I focus on what they're dealing with with their kids, with their husbands. Um, with their families, and I really show uh, how they're supporting each other, how they're keeping each other's head up uh, in the midst of them serving their prison terms. Prison terms. Wow. Yeah. Now, are are the women in prison from Philadelphia, or are they all over? Yeah, these are these. So this this is actually cast in this production uh, in the city of Indianapolis. That's where the actual cast is coming from, Indy. Um, but uh, when we do tour the production, it'll be women from that particular city, that area. I see. So, yeah. yeah, so I did my research. So when Franchella told me uh, she was bringing you on the show, I was like, okay, let me do my research. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. I'm respecting that question. You got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So doing my research, I realized that you've done several different uh, mind thought provoking uh, things. So you also did for color girls, which I had the pleasure of uh, being playing the color yellow and several uh, different productions um, under different directors and different producers. I, I put it in, in stage plays as well. So um, did you take on, when you brought for, for Colored Girls, did you take on the book version? Did you take on uh, Tyler Perry's version? Or did you put your own spin on uh, for Colored Girls? I, I love that, um, that yes, book. Yes. yes, we went from the uh, book version and put our own twist on it. Um, put our own twist on it, man. Made it very. Um, it was it was a it was a lot of dance in that show. Of course, yeah. it was a wedding, but I am a huge fan of dance, and that's in any of my shows. You won't see nobody singing. It just that ain't my thing, man. Uh, <laughs> man, we must be like brothers and sisters because mm -hmm. I uh, dance. I mean, I can sit there and just watch for hours. It just yeah. makes me. That's a, another happy place to see people dance mm -hmm. because of the creativity and just the emotion. In dance that it brings, yeah, I love right. it. Yeah, that's and that's how my my trend, man. I do poetry all day, I do dance all day, but that's kind of how we really told that story uh, for mm -hmm. color girls uh, to, of course, the original poetic uh, pieces, but also dance. Dance interpretation was a big thing, and I found that the women on uh, and shout out to Tina Harris, man, she directed it. Uh, the women in the rehearsals, they were getting a lot of freedom and they were getting a lot of deliverance through personal things they were going through. And I didn't know how it was for them um, and watching this, you know, and that was really eye opening for me because again, the guys, we're not emotional like that, but women, you guys, you guys are emotional beings and you express yourself emotionally. We express ourselves with our hands, you know, and to see how those women came together and how they really gel in rehearsal sessions and in production, man, it really touched me and it moved me emotionally. So again, it all flipped, you know, but it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, so you, you, you're, you're getting ready soon coming up. You're, you're doing the play there in Chicago, right? For uh, the yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna okay. be in Dallas. So we like everywhere, man. So we're in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yes. and, and Dallas. So, so you you have a lot of you know good people that that's performing. Yes. And, yes. and and they are let the people know like you you know you got a lot of connections out there. I see. We try. We try. We try. We try. <laughs> <laughs> First, man, I want to recognize my home girl, man, Claudia Jordan. Man, she has been an absolute blessing. You guys may know her from. Housewives of Atlanta, she was on Jeopardy, she was on Price is Right, she's on a lot of things, man, but she, um, she's in a production. Uh, Miles Malisha, also known as uh, Marcus Pope, he was in Roll oh, Back. Yeah. Uh, Proud Family. Uh, we have um, Pooch Hall, who played Berwin in the TV show The Game, he's a part of the mm -hmm. cast. We have Whitney mm -hmm. Taylor, uh, who's uh, the singer in Day 26, he's also in Loving Hip Hop, and a couple of things. And then lastly, we have Karan Joseph Riley, uh, who is um, from TV show Saints and Sinners, I think uh, Mahogany, Monogamy and a couple other shows, I believe, uh, but he's a part of the cast as well. So that, that, those people, along with our uh, locals, um, I don't want to say locals, with people from the South, because it stretches from Memphis all the way down to Houston when it comes to the cast uh, for that show. So um, that's the crew. And I'm telling you, they are, they're going to bring some fire when we record it on next week. I'm sure they are. So, so tell so we got viewers from all over. So tell them how they can tell people how they can purchase tickets and support the event. Great so it's in Dallas, Texas, y'all. So don't look for it until the end. Yep. So what we're doing, like Hamilton did, Hamilton, the musical. Uh shout out, man. They did a great job. It was just a lot yeah. of things. A lot yeah. of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of musicals myself, but <laughs> no, what we're we doing though, y'all, we going um we going we gonna we're gonna record it and we're gonna stream it live. Um we're gonna record it and it's gonna be shown from our website, demarcoplays.com. That's okay. demarcoplays.com. And we're gonna be showing it for three nights on uh, January the 29th, the 30th and 31st from our website. So you'll be able to watch it on your cell phone, um, your 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 mobile any mobile device from the television at home. Uh, but make sure you guys check it out. We're trying some new man uh, with this production. And we definitely gonna need you guys support and watching it. And we're gonna be offering some one on one. So if you're looking to meet any of those people, 
whether it be um, Pooch Hall, be a video, having a one-on-one session with him, that will be available. And those tickets are available now on sale at demarcoplays.com. Awesome. Amazing. I'm, I'm loving it. So don't don't forget, you know, when you come here for your for the web series, you mm-hmm. know, Philadelphia natives, Lynette okay. and myself, you know, you got okay. any, uh, you know, I'm not going to say extra roles because we just don't want to walk by. You know, to the camera. <laughs> don't forget it. Don't forget it. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we gonna be there quite a bit. So um we're gonna be there quite a bit. So I definitely will take you up on that offer. And even when I'm there in town, man, maybe you guys will set do something live from there or something. I'm not sure, you know, at where we start to work it, but I will definitely let you guys know and I appreciate this opportunity. Oh, a lot of people, but I, I have a last question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So your stage place, and in my research, I build my questions. So I, I did some more research. So your stage plays <laughs> seem extremely thought provoking, especially Dear Diary. Mm-hmm. Um, Look at you. So I have to ask this question because okay. this this was an important one. Um, Dear Diary, he beats me because he loves me. So I do know that some women um think like this so i think that what you what you're doing is so relevant to bring awareness to situations like domestic violence and you know uh mm-hmm. gun violence and so on and so forth so i applaud you for that so um i know philadelphia is going to be amazing because i understand where you're going with your thought process and how you want to make like you said make people do better choices I, we we think alike in that aspect i write about it a lot in the books that mm-hmm. i write about our choices and the decisions we make and how they impact those around us and also the why behind the behavior to begin with so anyway talk a little bit about uh, about dear diary so dear diary came up um actually came up when i was in uh, los angeles we had to philadelphia uh, to england and at the altar, uh, there was a couple of women who had came uh, and they wanted prayer regarding their situations uh, of, of in a domestic violence um, relationships. And I kept hearing that city after city, we'll do there. And then I went to San Diego, heard the same thing. Went to Seattle, heard the same thing. Went down to Baltimore, heard the same thing. Chicago, this is a trend. We need to, we need to do something against this. So... The story of your diary focuses on five people who are dealing with five different types of abuse, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse. Um, geez, I, it's been a minute, but they're dealing with five different it's types. So of abuse. emotional. Yeah. Physical, emotional, verbal, financial and sexual. I believe those five. Those uh-huh. what we focus on. So you, fo- you focus on five people lives that we go in and out of throughout the story and then kind of show you how all these neighbors are dealing with some differently, but they live in the same complex. Um, this is pretty good show because uh, with, with one of the physical abuse stories, uh, I show a woman being physically abusive to her fiance, uh, which is a very taboo thing. That's African American man. So um, when I showed that story, a lot of men started coming forward saying they were being physically abused, not that they were doing anything like that. These were men, men, men. You know, they just didn't want to retaliate with women, with this woman, with these women hitting on them and yelling at them and putting their hand in their face. And that really, really opened up the table for a lot of conversation when those men began to come to us about what they were dealing with uh, in, in regards to domestic violence. And, and I'm glad that you talked about both sides because it does happen, unfortunately, on both sides. You know, um, yeah, it's is something that we I think want, we need to heal as a people so that we can be better to each other. So mm-hmm. you know, I know I wrestle with some things in my early teenage years as well. So I really, um, I really applaud you for what you're doing because you're bringing awareness to a very important topic. Thank you. So tell people how they can follow you and find out more about what you're doing. Um, so make sure you spell out Demarco because some people might not. Know. <laughs> okay, so the best, the best, and long way to follow me here's my social security. Okay, write it down. <laughs> wait, wait, let me get a pen. Let me get a pen. <laughs> Keeping it so, real. I did the research already. I did the research already. <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> no, you're hilarious, man. I like that, man. But no, this how you follow me, man. Demarco is D E M A R C O. That's D E M A R C O. Demarco plays like you're playing around. It's P L A Y S dot com. Demarco plays dot com. And our uh, Instagram is same thing. Demarco plays and Facebook is Demarco plays. So that's how you guys follow us and keep us with us. And we'll be giving away some passes and things too um, via Instagram. Okay. Okay, awesome. That, thank you so much. We truly thank appreciate you, you taking your yeah. time to come yeah. on a Real Recognized Real Talk radio show to talk to us about your project. Um, remember, this is always your home. If you got anything else going on, just let us know. We would love to have you back. And may God continue to bless you on this journey. Yeah. You know, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And good luck with everything. Okay. Bye bye. Take Bye-bye. care. So that was DP DeMarco. So make sure that you support um, his project. So right now he mentioned that he's in Dallas, Texas. Well, he's bringing Philadelphia to Dallas, Texas. So make sure that you support that. There is going to be a number of celebrities in that uh, production as well. So make sure that you go. Well, actually, you don't have to go anywhere because like he said, you can watch it on your mobile devices, on your laptops, et cetera. So um, Philadelphia will also be in Philadelphia. Um, filming in Philadelphia, so make sure you support that as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm just so always excited. I mean, it's it's just so much talent, you know, that we even bring on our show with everybody. I mean, yourself. I mean, you have a magazine, Love Exquisite, um, that, that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been featuring, you know, a lot of good um, people on, yeah. I think, I, I believe for 2020, I was the first on the cover. Thank you so much. You know, and you know, you write beautifully. You know, um, and I I commend you. You also have a shout out um, to my mom who helps me edit what I write. So shout out to my mom. That's Love right. Mom. That's right. Shout out to mom. She, yeah, she's she's our she, she's your number one supporter. You know, she I see is. her always really supporting. Is. Tuning in, and she supports the the real recognized real talk radio show. So I thank her so much for always tuning in and having all those positive comments that she gives to us. Um, yeah. I look yeah. forward to seeing that. You know, same same with my mom. You know, we we are blessed to still have our mothers around, and you know, and so I I'm looking. Let me see. It's not letting me. Um, let me see if I can. Our our next guest the the link to to his phone. Um, so I'll keep I'll keep talking while you yeah, while you, you do that. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um just to piggyback off of what um Demarco was saying and how um they cast like so as you know he already casted in here in Philadelphia but he does different projects continually so you want to make sure that you visit his website so that you know when there's casting calls uh available when he has different projects so just make sure that you keep all of these people on your hearts and in your minds and in and, and your prayers because as you know if you are a uh, an actress if you are an actor if you are a writer if you're a producer these things are not an easy feat and sometimes what you put out there doesn't always get picked up by mainstream media so you need um people like us to come and uh say come on we what we welcome you we welcome everybody onto the show so if you are out there and you have projects that you're working on that you want to uh promote or that you have different business plans and different services that you provide to people that people might not know about or even if they know about it you want you need a platform because you can't get into the big box stores or you can't get onto mainstream media yet the key word in that sentence is yet you are always welcome here on the Real Recognized Real Talk radio show. So we don't we don't ever get too big to interview uh, people, you know, human beings. We never are too big to interview human beings. So I, I, what I don't like is when people get too big 
to come on shows like the Real Recognized Real Talk radio show. You invite people and then they say, oh, I always think about it or you don't hear from them or they say no because they feel like you don't have enough followers or viewership or viewers or whatever the situation might be. But then when you go and you see them on somebody else who might have 50,000 followers or a million followers and you go on to their live and there's only 25 people watching. So it, so the number of followers, the number of clicks don't always equate to um, to business sense, you know, to dollars and cents. The, pe- the number of people that you have following you don't doesn't mean that they always support your efforts. So you want to every platform that you can find to utilize to get your name and stuff out there. You want to utilize it, especially right. if it's a positive one. Now, you can say no. Don't get me wrong. You can say no if it's not in, li- in line with uh, with what you believe or you feel comfortable with. But when it's a right. good, wholesome show like this one. With Absolutely. The- Preach, girl. Preach. Preach. <laughs> but we do have our guests. So. So anyway, we have Hey, Sharif, how are you? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? Nice to see you. Good. Nice to see you too. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for being on the Real Recognized Real Talk radio show. But before we get started, what we like to do is give you a proper introduction. So Lynette is going to introduce you. So Sharif Keller is an entrepreneur, owner of Mr. Good Beard, which promotes an all natural hair care regimen by offering all natural products for facial hair, hair, as well as for the face and body. Sharif calls himself a beard enthusiast. Um, he, his company, Mr. Good Beard, specializes in beards, oils, and shine oils, Scrub, glass, moisturizer, and wave pomade. After being diagnosed with psoriasis and trying so many products in retail, in the in, sorry, and trying so many products in the retail market, he found that there were chemicals and additives that were harmful to the skin. So he decided to create his own all natural product. And after doing much research. He began testing the product on himself as well as in uh, several barbershops. He had much success in those areas, which caused him to launch his own product line. So he also takes orders for his product line, wholesale orders, as well as regular customers like you and I. So welcome and thank you for being on the Real Recognize Real Talk radio. Nice. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So somebody's calling me. They always call me, and I know they watching. Right. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. So you you have uh, a shop on Etsy called Mr. Goodbeard. I do. Um, it has become a fashion trend with guys, especially in Philadelphia. The big mm-hmm. uh, beards. At first, I think what is it like called? In, in, in I'm sorry. What do they call the beards? Can you hear me? What, what the Sunni beard? The Sunni beard. Yeah. Uh-huh. So at first, it was something that was that was uh, worn by Muslim men, but now it's like a fashion trend in Philadelphia, where a lot of the guys are um, are wearing big beards. So in particular. Um, they're growing their beards out longer and stronger. So tell us a little bit about how some of these men need your product because some of them I've seen, some of them have little patches missing. <laughs> you know, the line ain't quite connecting right yet, you know. Or then, 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 then they start, then they patches. start coloring it all in. But no, oh, but no. Sharif got something for you. Like, I give do. it to you, Sharif. Give it to him. You know what? I mean, just like just like you said, you know, in Philadelphia, we're the home of the big beard. You know, the beards came from you know Islam. You know, in Islam and Arabic, we call the beard alaya, right? So that's one of the reasons why I did grow my beard up. But it wasn't just for being a Muslim. You know, it was for a fashion trend as well. You know, with myself growing up in Philadelphia, or my parents are from Winfield. You know, we've seen like this trend of all of these men who were boys who were brought into Islam 
And then we just grew up and we just love having this beard on our face. A lot of my fathers wouldn't be, wasn't even able to even grow a beard. So right. with myself, you know, I moved to Cincinnati when I was 10 years old and came back home to Philly once I was 20 and still just started seeing the beards everywhere. And when I was in Cincinnati, people always said, yo, why do you have this beard? Why do you have this beard? I said, well, I have this beard for this particular reason. And people started growing beards out there, too. So I started seeing like, huh. I wonder what I can do when it comes down to these beards because I was putting grease in my beard, you know, <laughs> things off and you know, trying to pick it out. And I had that patch at one time too, you know, but <laughs> it makes a difference, you know, when you are taking care of your beard in a certain way, you know, especially when it comes down to these fashion trends that we have going on right now. You see it all over the place in Hollywood, these basketball right. players, baseball right. players, et cetera, et cetera. Even when it comes to like Caucasian men are growing out their beards as well. Right. Wow. So, I wanted to go ahead and create a product because I got diagnosed with psoriasis. And if no one knows about what psoriasis is, it's an autoimmune disease. And with this autoimmune disease, you know, you get patches on your skin. You know, your, your face starts itching, your arms start itching. And it wasn't good for me. So when I went to the doctor, he's like, you know what? You need to take this medicine that's called Humira. You know what? And mm -hmm. here it is a shot that you go ahead and take inside your stomach. I'm thinking to myself, I'm a pretty healthy man. Um, I go to the gym. I eat very well. And I don't want to go ahead and put those type of chemicals in my body. Mm -hmm. So I just started doing all this research, you know, about some natural ways that make these patches go away. And they're plaques. You know, there's like little white mm -hmm. plaques that look like little bumps. And they're right. good on my face as well. Like scales. Yeah. Right. And, and it wasn't a good look for myself because I like to keep myself like right, right, and, right. And yeah, big and cool. things okay. like that. Right. <laughs> and the other part is like, you know, it gives you like kind of dandruff in your hair as well. It's like, right. ah, I can't do that. So right. I started going to these flea markets. Mm -hmm. And inside these flea markets, you saw all these different people who were selling like shea butter. So right. I talked to this one guy one day, he had a white shea butter. And most people see like yellow shea butter and that yellow right. shea butter is kind of gritty. You know, right. so I saw this white shea butter and I started asking him, I was like, where do you get this white shea butter from? He said, I get it from Ghana. Right. He said, and this is the natural way without them putting this extra additive of nuts and things like that inside of mm -hmm. uh, the shea. So I said, huh. I bought myself a little jar. When I bought that jar, I took it. I took it home and he said, mix it up with some coconut oil and see what happens. So I took it home, put it in a bowl, mix it up, put some coconut oil inside of it and it's put all over my whole body. And within about two or three weeks, I started seeing these plaques start going away. I'm like, wow, this is really something really cool. I said, I think I might be able to do something with this. So I started researching online and like, huh, it's a lot of different ways you can use this shea butter besides mm -hmm. just on your skin. You know, right. so I started putting it inside my hair, too. So I started seeing my hair. My hair is naturally curly, but I started like waving my hair a little bit more. I was like, wow, this is doing something different. I said, I wonder what it would do for my beard. So did a little bit more research. I saw a bunch of different carrier oils that would help my beard grow and promote the health. And I'm all about promoting my health at, at all times. So I mixed in some shea butter. I mixed in some coconut oils, a couple of the carrier oils. I let it set overnight. And then I became a bomb. And then I started putting that inside my beard and started styling my beard. So a couple of weeks later, I went to my barber and he's like cutting my hair. He's like, yo, Reef. He said, you're not having any more like kind of flakes coming off your beard no more. Your beard's starting to look a lot more fuller. He said, what are you doing? I said, man, I'm using the shea butter. And I'm adding a couple of these different ingredients inside of it. I didn't want to give away my recipe. Absolutely. That's right. I was about to say it. Like, cut it off. He said, like, cut, cut. <laughs> I, you know, I had to kind of finesse him a little bit. So I told him about the recipe. So he styled me. And once he got done, like, cutting my beard, I mean, it looked fabulous. I mean, it was absolutely fabulous. And it had a nice shine. It looked full. So went there a couple Smelling weeks. Smelling good. Hey, it was what? <laughs> my, wife was like, my wife was like, "Yo, your beard smells so good, babe." I was putting some <laughs> oils inside of it, and it just became this nice full beard that I always, always wanted. And even my dad, he never grew a beard. He always said he had a regular goatee. That's Mister Keith Sweat there. Right, so, right, right. <laughs> Jesse. So he had a little goatee, and he started using my beard balm as well. And all of mm -hmm. a sudden, his beard growing in. So yeah. he's like, so you really got something. You really got something. So I just started doing more and more research about all these different oils and I found my niche. And when um, I found my niche, I decided to go to a flea market myself 
and go ahead and bottle up my beer bombs and my beard oils. So when I did that, I sold out the whole day. I think I made about $450 within three hours or so. Wow. I, that, I was like, oh my God, I think I got some. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. So I didn't have the time actually to go to the flea market every single weekend. I'm a full-time co-worker at Ikea in South Philly. I'm mm -hmm. a kitchen planner down there. So I'm an internet savvy, pretty guy, you know, so I decided to go ahead and place the stuff onto Etsy. And when I got on Etsy, it started selling, 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 selling. We also have another business it's called The Good Stuff Naturals, where we sell all the body butters, all the shea butters. I all the want to ask you about this. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about uh, yeah, the Good Stuff Naturals and MGB Creations. So tell yes. us a little bit about that. So the Good Stuff Naturals is a business that my wife and I created because of my autoimmune disease. The coconut butter, excuse me, the cocoa butter, the shea butters. Um, we have sugar scrubs, dead sea salt oils, face masks, hair and wave um, moisturizers, et cetera, et cetera. We Do you have anything for eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> for what? For what? You know, you know, ladies now, when we were younger, we used to get them plucked and, you know, had some of us still do, get them, uh, whack, get them waxed and all of that. And you had to get the perfect arch and you like, yeah, my eyebrows are on fleek. And then as you get older, they start thinning out from all that wax and tweaking. And now you got to put some in. <laughs> right, right, right. So you got anything for eyebrows? <laughs> Nothing for eyebrows. <laughs> there might be another niche market you might Hey, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna write that one down right now. Actually, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've actually had the um the good stuff natural business for about five years now, and it's been really successful. Um, we actually have the number one cocoa butter um on Etsy across the whole world. Wow. Um, we go through wow. cocoa butter. I mean, I say about five pounds a week. Wow, um, that's we make, awesome. We make ourselves. We take it from the raw form. We melt it down. We add shea butter, coconut oil, and a couple of different uh, carrier oils. And then we whip it all up, and then we bottle it. We come up with our own packaging. Uh, we label it, and then we send it off to our customers. We've sold, um, I think, to every single state inside the country except for Alaska. Nice. So, so you also have growth and styling oil for um, locks and braids and yes. natural hairstyles. So. Mm -hmm. um, why are these type of products so important, especially for black hair care? Definitely. You know, you see so many different black hair care lines that are out there right now, which aren't actually even owned by black people. You know, us as African-Americans, we go ahead and come up with something and these big companies go ahead and buy us up, you know, so it's no longer black owned. So I wanted to come up with something that was actually made inside of my home with my wife so we can go ahead and have this black unity going on. Absolutely. And with that black unity that's going on, we created these type of, of oils that are going to go ahead and promote the health, promote the growth, the show people. And it's healthy. healthy. And it's healthy. It, right. And, you know, and it's healthy. Know. So a lot of times people buy products, they don't really look at the ingredients to see what they're putting on their skin or putting, you know, in, in on their bodies or on their body. So it's definitely but, but, but one of the reasons honest. why it's important. So, so, but to, let, let me, let me say this though, to be honest, like, you know, sometimes it's really hard to find these good products. It you is. Know, unless you, you go to a flea market, like you said, to get shea butter. I know people that like the black soap and different things. You have to go, you can't really find a lot of stores that sell this kind of stuff. You know, totally you agree. have to go out of your, your neighborhood, out of your comfort zone. It, it's nowhere near. Then you don't travel. So you just get what's on the shelf. Right. So, to make it easily accessible, you know, especially to the black community, but it's not just us anymore. You know, it's this not. like you said, you know, other necessities are are uh, wearing beards and 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 things like of that nature. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. that same product too. And I commend you because you took a situation of your own that was happening to you to 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 turn it around to groom yourself back. Not only groom yourself back, but to help others Other, who might no. be in the similar situation or just, you know, maybe they did still have a, a, a nice beard 
Now it looks even better, and it's smells okay. good. Mm -hmm. no, right. so see, had I known about, go ahead. I didn't say nothing. Oh. Had I known about your product with my ex, his hair was so peasy, and he probably <laughs> got you, but I don't care because he know he already know. I, you know, you with me, you got to look a certain way. <laughs> and so at the time, Murray's Grease, I knew about Murray's Grease and the right. Black Cat. I'm right. like the man. You ain't right. You ain't right. But it was like I said, it was like not a thing like yours. So now mm -hmm. that I know it's out there, I, I, you got a supporter right here. So Thank I, you. I, I appreciate that. Oh, well, I'll be like sure to send you guys plenty of uh, gifts when it comes down to the mail. Um, so please go ahead and your email, send me your addresses, and I got you, ladies. No problem. I see a nice That's what's up. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to let you come on to the show without connecting the two concepts. So we were talking about Philadelphia uh, of the film. And so as an African-American male uh, with experiencing gun violence that plagued our city, um, as a black male who is successful um, in business and you're not going down the wrong path, which many of uh, some of our black men take, I won't say many, but some of the young black men take the wrong path. So what message would you say to those people about choosing to do right versus wrong? Like you said, yeah. you know, um, coming from the Winfield, you know, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad and there's a lot of ugly that happens around there. And one thing that my mother did for us, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you. I just want them to see you. So okay, so we, gotcha. like, we took ourselves off the screen, so we good. Okay. Go I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, my mother, she created a business, you know, when we moved to Cincinnati. And when she created this business, it showed me about being an entrepreneur. And it was the first black furniture consignment store in Cincinnati, Ohio, back in 1995. And working inside that business with her, that let me see how you can be successful I didn't want to go down a route that I've seen many other people inside of my neighborhood go into. You know, I never wanted to go to jail. I never wanted to be on the block selling drugs. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to know how to be a hustler. And that's one thing that my mother and my father did all my life. They hustled so my sisters and I can go ahead and have a perfect life. And so advice that I can go ahead and give a young black man that's out there, sky's the limit. You know, when it comes to being positive, when it comes to having your faith, Let's stay strong when it comes to it. Keep those positive influences inside your life and educate yourself. Educating yourself doesn't also have to mean that you have to go to school all the time. Educating yourself means read. Reading is fundamental. You know, I don't mean to sound cliche, but it really, really is. You can educate yourself by reading, by going on the Internet, taking a look at see what is out there for you. There's so many different fields of work and so many different fields of hustle that is legal, that is an opportunity for us to become positive black men, positive black dads, positive black husbands, positive black boyfriends, positive people. My suggestion for any black man that's listening to me right now, find your niche, find what you're good at. Always have some sort of talent that is out there. That's why God put his heel onto the earth. Find what you want to go ahead and do and find your passion. I found a passion of mine. And this is just one of my passions. You know, we haven't even got into what my next endeavor is going to go ahead and be. But the things that I'm doing for myself right now, I'm making sure that I'm keeping myself healthy. I'm making sure I'm keeping myself educated. I'm making myself be aware about my surroundings and what's going on with me inside my mind. So that's my suggestion for anybody that wants to go ahead and listen to me and wants to have a positive outlook when it comes down to life. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. No better. That's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Love it. Love it. You know, and 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 to have that foundation, you know, is so important from your yeah. parents and giving them the recognition of of steering you in the right direction. But mm -hmm. but you know, it, in some cases. A lot of people have that, but they wind up going off of that path because of yeah. their surroundings or because mm -hmm. of you know the people that they're hanging with. So mm -hmm. you know, you took you took 
first of all, you know, you already were successful. You already have your job and supporting your family, but you took a situation, like I said, you took a situation, a health condition, and you turned it around for yourself because you said, no, I'm not going to settle for this, or I'm not going to let this person tell me I got to use this and try a million products until you figure which work. You made it work for yourself, and now you're making it work for other people, and I commend you. I really Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so make sure that you tell everybody how they can purchase your products and follow you. And congratulations, and we wish you the best as well. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, they can go ahead and follow me on Facebook. Um, that's Mr. Goodbeard, M R G O O D B E A R D, at Facebook. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Goodbeard. That's M I S T E R G O O D B E A R D. And also, you can follow just my page for my creations that I make, and that's MGB Creations on Instagram. Yes, awesome. We're we're on that. So, yeah, Go we're gonna put, we're gonna put all that information on our page so people can find how to how to purchase the product, how to how to get there. Um, and you know, I, you said that you you have other things in the works that's going on. So we would love for you to come back and tell us where sure. you are with that and how successful you are. You know, with with this line that you have now, and um, you know, just just continue success. Just yes. continue. Success. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you guys for giving me the platform to go ahead and talk about what I have going on, but it comes down to my successes and the success that I have for my wife as well with the Good Stuff Naturals. And I forgot to plug that as well. That's bodybythegoodstuff.etsy.com. That's the Good Stuff Naturals. You know, you can't go wrong when it comes down to those products. You know, we've sold over 1,500 products, you know, in the past three or four years. Um, and being a small business where my wife and I both work full time, having three children, two that are on the spectrum for autism, we're busy, you know, and we're still making sure that we're staying involved when it comes down to our business and staying positive. Right. So That's the only way to make it successful. So I'm yeah. so keep going. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Scott's the Thank you so much for tuning for being a guest on our show. And you, um, I'm sure this won't be the last time. You take care. Yes, you take care. come back with my eyebrow coming, so. hey, I got you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. God bless. Thank God you. Bless you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. So that's the end of our show, conclusion of our show. Um, we want to thank uh, DP DeMarco and Sharif Keller from coming on the show and just blessing us with their gifts. Um, yes. We want to thank everybody who has tuned in um, and continue to support the Real Recognized Real Talk radio show. And also for December, we are still looking for those singles, those single men and those single women, please. Email us at rrrtalkradio at yahoo.com because we're trying to find your love for, for, for Christmas time. If you celebrate Christmas, the holidays, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, we want to find love for you in the month of December. So please email us at rrrtalkradio at yahoo.com yes, 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 yes. for our December show. But once again, we want to thank you guys and we are out. Who's this?